So with, with that, I would like to <clears throat> talk about the uh, mapping of tectonic geopolity from satellite imagery. Now, the, the main aim of my talk is basically to tell you how uh, interactions are extremely important. As you've seen, let's take the example from the interaction that we had to organize this event. You have to you know, uh, interact at different levels and then we're all here together. Uh, so what do we, what humans do when they interact, they use language. So language, like I talk to you right now, so I'm communicating with you, that's an interaction. But when we talk about the plates, tectonic plates, they also communicate. There is a language and that language is something that I would like you to understand today. So, uh, so my motivation will be uh, for the uh, entire uh, talk when I finish, you should be able to communicate with uh, maps and you should be able to understand how to talk with a map. Um, great. So now first thing, as you can understand, what is tectonic geopolity? It has two, this term has two, uh, uh, you know, the uh, words in it. One is tectonic, one is topography. And as you can see that tectonic topography is basically related to, I'm, I'm sure uh, students know about uh, tectonic plates. So when the tectonic plates interact, they create a topography. And that topography is, an, as I said, is an you know, uh, outcome of interaction. That means the topography should tell us about interaction. So therefore, when you are able to understand how to read topography, you will understand how to know what how the interaction has happened. So therefore, when the interactions happen, there are different structures that are formed, which I'm going to go through slowly. Um, and then you will hopefully, uh, by the end of the talk, understand how the tectonics works. Um, so here, for example, this is the latest tectonic map of the world. Uh, not sure about uh, whether you have seen this map before, but this was uh, released in 2022. Um, and as you can see, what you see here, uh, for example, if we take, um, you know, the uh, South American and uh, African plate, there's a big uh, ocean in between. And initially they were together, as you know, from the, you know, uh, basic of tectonics, the two plates uh, are together first, and then they start breaking up. And when they break, they rift, and then there's an ocean forming. Now, look at from the beginning, when the plates start breaking, why do they break in the first place? Right, so that's the first question we need to understand how how they break, and if they break, the breaking normally happens by formation of structures. Those structures are normally normal forms. Uh, so therefore, you are bas basically starting breaking the continent, and then they move away from each other, create space. So in other words, initially when the continents break, they create a lot of space. If that was the case, then the whole of the Earth would have been expanding like we have been expanding universe. Universe is expanding. Earth will also be expanding and we'll have a huge Earth. But we know now that the Earth is not really expanding that much. We, what, we, what we have seen is that because there are also zones where the new crust gets, where, where the, the crust gets consumed. In other words, oceanic crust gets consumed. You've seen, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example in a moment. You've seen the oceanic, uh, you know, uh, example of the subduction system that we have in Indonesia. And then there was an earthquake recently, I think uh, yesterday. So that also interaction creates those earthquakes also. So you have faults, you have uh, structures, you have earthquakes, you have in fact mineral deposits, oil, and everything is basically around what you call the tectonic plate interaction. And um, and that's what, what we've seen. So uh, for example, uh, here, as I said, that this interaction of the tectonic plate in Indonesia has, has created an earthquake. Unfortunately, 160 people have, have died so far. And <clears throat> this was not really big earthquake. It was a small magnitude earthquake. But you can see the, the uh, you know, the rise of the, the death toll is 162. Again, questioning why we have been spending more or less, uh, more than 200 years in understanding earthquakes. And yet we are unable to save people. Which again, if you go and see what has happened right now, I can tell you right now what has happened there. It's just because the structures were not ready to face an earthquake. And that's why this happened. Now, this is not a new thing. Earthquakes have been happening and they have been happening throughout the time. They're much older than we are on the planet, right? So we are learning about earthquakes right now. But what is important is that you need to understand why are earthquakes created? Because you as students must be the problem solvers of the problems that we are getting. So 
with your command, we should not be, we should be able to stop at least the death toll from these earthquakes. We should, there should be no death from the earthquakes. Uh, if you, uh, as you know, the, uh, when you come to the, to, to the workforce and you become a part of the workforce, then you will understand why earthquakes occur and how we can stop that. Right. So that's, uh, that's, that's the motivation. Now, again, see, the earthquakes are caused by interaction of plates and Indonesia is a simple uh, subduction system. We all know that. We know that this area is prone to earthquake disasters. We absolutely have no problem in that. Everybody understands it. And also they know that this, the earthquakes can come anytime. We do not know the timing, but we know that this area is, is prone to earthquakes. So the question is, why are we not getting ready the structures that are there so that there will be, you know, uh, what we call this, there will be shaking, but there will be no problem. And we've seen these examples. For example, you go to uh, Japan, you go to uh, New Zealand, magnitude seven earthquake. There was absolutely no casualty from even uh, bigger earthquake. So again, the question is about how, what caused earthquakes. And also, as I said, because of the plates, but we also need to know how the science can save lives. And, and, and I think that's a very critical message that I want to go through. Uh, so here, let's try to revise. As I said, the first part of the question is trying to understand why are we having the interaction of the plates and what is it? So you have seen the classical, uh, you know, the Wilson cycle when you enter undergrads and the Wilson cycle is in front of you and you know how, what is Wilson cycle? So you start stage one, stage two, stage three. So for example, in this case, if you go from um, stage one, um, in fact, when the, the, the you know, the uh, in fact, you hear it's numbered as zero and seven. Um, stable continents and continents are stable. Now the continents start to break and that becomes the first to what is called the rift zone. Now, what is happening during the rifting? When you have the continents start breaking and then the rift will open up. So you are basically uh, creating a uh, faulting. As I said, the normal faulting is gonna dominate. And what, what you're also doing, you're doing this uh, thinning of the crust. The crust becomes thin, so the mantle becomes very near, it's, it comes near because of domes, and then the volcanism is, is, is an outcome of that. So you have the volcanism during the rift, so you got the basin formation, rifting, volcanism, and then volcano will come, the basalts will come, you know, you got basically the ocean, new oceanic crust comes, so you're forming a new crust. It's just like a new human is born, and the new oceanic crust is born at the you know, these, uh, where you have the rift in uh, you know, the rift system. Therefore, you are, you're having a new crust forming and then that crust gets consumed where you cause subduction zone and that's where you have this uh, Indonesia at the moment. So Indonesia is, what do you mean, according to the Wilson cycle, we have the Indonesia at a stage where subduction is happening. So it has, uh, the, the part where the rifting has happened is already gone. Now we are at the Indonesia is an example of a second stage of rift, uh, this Wilson cycle, where you have subduction, oceanic subduction. And then what's going to happen later? So when the whole of the ocean gets consumed, where then the two things, like the let's say the continent, there are two continents here, in between is a, a oceanic crust, oceanic crust gets consumed, two continents come together, and then what do you have? You have a beautiful um, big continent, the two continents are coming together. So you got one continent now, and that is what you have the, what do you call this, uh, collision zone, right? So therefore there's an opening, see there's an opening. So opening went at the rift and then closing by the, by the, what do you call this, the continental, continental crust, a uh, continental, continental uh, collision. And I will be giving you examples from, from different parts of the world, uh, particularly the Himalayas, uh, to, to tell you how, how we can read now from that. Now, all that, all those states are preserved in topography and I can show you that right now. So therefore, starting from the rifting onto the collision, you can read topography and you will also understand how to map it. Now, before going to field, for example, I want you to do this, read the tectonic uh, topography and make your own maps. Then you can hit the field because at least from for, for, for the first, uh, you know, the, the first effort they're gonna put is to create a topographic map in such a way that you already know what I'm going to expect in uh, in the field. So, and that I, I'll be covering, uh, for example, from here. Now, this is a typical, what I call a tectonic life cycle. It is a life cycle. We humans think that the life is just about, you know, uh, uh, the way we are. 
uh, I, I don't really think that because for me, the life, uh, the tectonic plate is all alive because see the, the they're moving, right? One plate is moving. So who's going to move? A dead body doesn't move, <laughs> right? So there is a movement of, uh, there is life associated with this volcanism coming up, the, the dynamics of the earth, is, you know, the, you can see that uh, at the subduction systems and all the military rate systems. So therefore, uh, what you can see here, the different parts of the Wilson cycle, uh, tectonic cycle. So the tectonics has life and the life, it opens up, as I said, rifts, and then you have a subduction system, you have collision. Now, all these things, if you want to read them, you can read it. For example, if some of the students are working on the rift system, like in, you know, the African rift system, you can expect right now, you can make a map right now. Okay, I want to map African rift system. What do I expect? Okay, let me think about it. Uh, read the tectonic uh, topography. And you can make a map. I can tell you that that map is going to guide you to, to do the geological mapping much efficiently than if you do not know how to read tectonic topography and then you start going to the uh, to the field, right? So this is really very important thing. So here, for example, what I want you all to do as students, because you are undergrads, uh, or probably some of your graduates, but what is important for you is to print this map and put it in your room where you spend most of the time. And this is the reason why I'm telling you this, because I do have it in my office uh, setting. Um, when you put map in front of you, it interacts with you. And I'm not joking. So in other words, the map is gonna talk to you. And that is something extremely critical. That's called interaction of maps. The moment you map, remember that every one of us has a different neural system. We are different people, even though we are same humans, but we think differently. That means the map is gonna interact with each of you differently. So that means, uh, what it means is that you will have your interaction that you can produce something which nobody on the planet has produced by interacting with maps. Rather than reading people, it is better that you start understanding how I can read it. Uh, you know, you can get help from the from what people have done so far. Bec you know, that, that becomes a base for you. But the main aim is that you become the reader you understand the topography. For example, in front of you is a beautiful uh, map, as you can see, and then you can see the Indian side, you have be beautiful big mountains down there on the, in the uh, northern side, the western side. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment later in, in another uh, you know, the slide. But what, what this map shows, it shows two things, land and oceans. And again, from a very quick perspective, if you wanna know the oldest rocks on the planet, they're on land, they're not in oceans. Why not in oceans? Oceans are really young. They're really babies. You know, in these, uh, for example, the continents are grand, 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 grand grandfathers. Well, like the oceans are babies. And most of the, most of here is the oceanic, you know, system here. You can see that we have a lot of, uh, you know, the uh, oceanic crust down here, but the oceanic crust is younger. That, what does that tell you? That tells you clearly that oceanic crust is young. Why? Because it gets reused at subduction systems. Whereas continents don't. Continents, you know, the, for example, you've got a subduction system, the continents, there's a continent, continent subduction system is like the oceanic crust is done. Now the two continents are sitting together. And this one, for example, India is pushing north and it tells, hey, go down. But this continent says, no, I don't want to go down. And while it doesn't want to go down, it goes up. And that's why even the mountains are there. So the mountain creation is, uh, at least in India, as you can see, is where you are resisting the movement to go down and that's why you create a topography. So therefore the topography is gonna tell you why I have a, why there's a mountain down here and why there's a valley down in front of, for example, see I'm making a valley here. Why is the valley in front of the mountain? That's called the foreland basin and one of the top foreland basins, uh, I'll show you in a minute, is in the Gangetic Plains. And then you know why is it there? It's not just like it is there, but it's why it is there. That's, that's something that the, the maps can, can tell you. So therefore, what is important is that you start learning how to interact with maps. So here is what we're going to do after that when we interact. Very simple way. I'm, I'm just showing because, you know, for this talk, I really can't put everything here. I'm just trying to, to incite your feelings to so that you get love for, for topography. Uh, so here, for example, you've got the mapping of striker faults. You can easily know. For example, see what one place is going here and it's here. <clears throat> they are interacting and what you have you will have a strike of the fault so the strike of the fault is already known for example if this is east and west the strike of the fault will be north south if the interaction is east west 
then this you know the strike or the fault and folding will be you don't need a compass for doing that you already know it the compass is just a, you know the instrument is going to tell you where the uh, which what is the direction but an actual machine is your brain it's going to know you already that what i'm expect i'm going to expect it there and if there is some variation from that then you can say okay let me try to understand why there's a variation and I, and i'm sure that when you go to the field you get a lot of variations so similarly we have for example the dip direction of the faults now you for uh, you take example of india again so here's india here's uh eurasia on that side india goes down eurasia tries to resist that but has to go up by faulting so the faults are created right and now you know look the bending of that is down here because it goes right like this. So therefore, you already know the dip direction of faults and folds. They will be mostly towards north or uh, northeast, you know, to be specific. But you can know from the interaction also the dip direction of faults and folds and, and other things, right? So therefore, we can classify structures based on topographic exp expression. And we will know, uh, for example, in India, again, that's an active area. Indonesia is an active area. So it's an active structures. There can be areas which are inactive. The structures are not active. They have been active in the past, but now they're not. So, so in, Indonesia is a very uh, active example. Um, and as I said, there can be examples where you have. And uh, so we can use relative age relationships to know uh, which uh, one is younger, which one is older. So for example, when you have a basin formation, you know, in the first uh, Wilson cycle, you got uh, rifting and so the rift is older then the sediments come uh, fill those rifts which are mostly normal faults and therefore the sediments are you know younger the sediments get the, the fault gets activated during the sedimentation then the, the fault is younger right so so that you know that those are the relationships that you can use you don't really need to know know the exact at the moment from the from the maps you know uh, uh, but you can basically some people have done some work so you can use their data to understand also I mean, very precisely, uh, the the day you know the the which structure has come first and which geological event has happened. So you you can make a, a geological history of that, a tectonic ge uh, tectonic and geological history, based on what's already known. Okay, now look here. Uh, this is a collision zone, and you more or less yeah. I, I hope you will never go through this, uh, but you can see uh, when when the cars collide, you form structures. So here, for example, you, you're forming, uh, you know, the, the, on the left side, on my left side, you see the car has been folded, uh, right? So the collision zones are like that. You have two, as I said, the two um, these uh, entities or two uh, continents, they're coming together and then they will start forming structures and, and you have a collision zone forming. Now, depends on the strength, one car can be stronger than the other. So if one card is stronger than the other, then you know which card is gonna have more damage. You don't have to tell you, right? So, uh, so therefore uh, the, the stronger one is gonna have obviously less damage. Most of the damage is gonna be to the weaker. And this is an extremely important thing for you to understand. And I'll give you an exact example of this in a moment. Then you will relate to this uh, collision of the cars with, uh, with the, you know, the, real life examples that we have on the tectonic plate. Here you go. So here is the interaction with the topography. What is it? It's a storytelling exercise. So what you're doing, you're basically trying to understand how I can tell a story from interaction. Oh, so here, uh, India is topographically down, as you can see from the topographic map. Then the Himalayan mountains on that side are topographically out. You can see the whole mountain range is up. Now think about these two cars. One car, India, let's say the, you know, one car is India, other car is you know, the Himalayan mountains on the other side of the another car or Eurasian place, another car. Now they're interacting. So the car which is gonna most damage is weaker. So which one is weaker here? Some people say that the mountains are really, I'm as strong as mountain, but if you really think that mountains are not strong, <laughs> they are weak. And that's why there is defamation. That's why there are faults, there are faults. If you are not weak, you will not fall. You will not fall, there will be no defamation. And that's what India is doing. So the India is stronger, well as the, this side is weaker. So this is a strong car, this is a weak car. The weak car that's highly deformed, well the strong car is, is not deformed. 
and therefore you don't see the mountain mountains here right on the indian side you don't have mountains uh, you only have mountains on the other side the beautiful mountains right mountain range so therefore what it tells you tells you from the topography you can easily understand which one is younger which one is older you don't need a test for this you don't need to take a sample and i want to know whether the strength is there now you know that from the topography so see that these are extremely important things to make an assumption now in lab you can't really understand these things and you're really lucky that you got topographic maps freely available to you i mean if you go back uh, probably 20 years uh, you, it was not that you were not that lucky now you have the drone imagery and other things you are extremely lucky uh, i would say all of you are youngsters you can do so much in mapping you mapping high resolution on you know the the areas and try to understand how these things form um, as I said, I, this, this, this talk is just to incite this, because if you really go into the detail, there is so much information that you can extract and you can start mapping them. Within a day, you can create a map and that can be extremely useful, right? So therefore, as I said, like from here, from Indian side, uh, Indian Eurasian Collision, you can see that the mountains are rising on the other side. You know, some, sometimes the Himalayans are rising. Of course they are rising. Why? Because India is going north and they are reacting. So they have to go up. And then the erosion keeps them down, but the mountains, but the faulting will always keep them up. And now you also know what type of faults were you expect. This is the hanging wall, see, it's going up. So you, I would expect that this area to have a dominantly reverse faults where the hanging wall goes up. So again, you go to field, is it a normal fault or a reverse fault? You know that dominance will be uh, reverse faults, right? There will be variations. As I said, I'm not going into the details of that, uh, just to give an idea about how to read topography now in front of that you can see for example blue color you know the greenish color um area in front of the mountains is a greenish color area which seems to be it is topographically down it is down and it is one of the best examples what you call this uh, indo-gangetic plains what is it this is a basin and what kind of basin is it sediments are coming from where rising mountains so here you go stage one the subduction start forming and then this start, this says, no, I don't want it all. Subduction finished. There was an ocean in between. The subduction finishes. Now the two continents are in, interacting. This continent says, I don't want to go down. So no, you have to go down. No, I don't want. And then what's going to happen? Interaction happens. This goes up. Erosion takes sediments from here. And where is it dumping? It dumping in front of that. So therefore, the sediments that I hear, how to, they are coming from the rising mountains. So therefore, if you do the geochemistry, you will already know the, what is the source of those. You don't have to, you know, because you will already understand. I mean, you can make your map. Okay, these sediments are coming from this. I am expecting that the, the, the moment, you know the timing, when the interaction started. When the interaction started, the mountains start rising and then the sediments came. So I already know the timing when the sediments have started coming and what type of sediments. Now, who is bringing the sediments? You go to the supermarket, right? And you made a really nice, beautiful supermarket. And uh, now you need a lot of things to put inside the supermarket, you know, the, the, the things that you are going to sell. Who's going to bring those things to that supermarket? So in other words, think about that, those things are sediments. So who's going to bring those sediments to that supermarket? Think about the supermarket as a basin. So you have to bring sediments to the basin, things to the basin. Who's going to bring it? We get it through using the cars or using the, you know, the big lorries or whatever, like the, the transporting it. So transport, you need basically a transport system. Who, what is the transport system here? The transport system here, here are these river systems, mostly, most of the rivers. So what are you doing? You create a topography, a river starts forming, and then it starts eroding them because the topographically up, the river will be highly energetic. And then if the topography down, the energy will be low. So you're getting high mountains, and then suddenly there is a plain area, it dumps the sediments. It just becomes, for example, you, you already know you are surrounded by oceans, you know the the delta system it's just like a delta system you can you can call it fan here it is called a fan there it's called delta it is water there so therefore you know now there will be a big fan system and it is there and that fan system was created by the interaction of the two plates and we also know when the fan system has formed and i also know if that fan system now has a fault i also already know the age of the fault the fault is younger than the fan system and look so we are creating a tectonic story by just telling you how to interact with maps. As I said, 
if I start telling you the story for the whole day, you'll be whole day sitting down there and will be telling you stories, right? Now, do, do we have anything? Do I have a writing somewhere? No, it is just reading the topographic maps and you can do the same thing. For example, I've been reading these topographic maps for all these years and it gives you, understand, I can tell you every time I look at the topography, I learn new things. That's why I'm telling you that it interacts with you. When you go to field, your professor goes and he writes whole paper, uh, in the in the field and you're like oh is the rock talking to you how do you know all the story he says of course they talk to me look i've written a book on this and there are so many books people have written about rocks so that means rocks do talk right and same as i said same thing the topography talks so therefore you need to understand how to how to read topography okay great now this was exactly what this uh you know the molar and Thapanya did a long time back in 1977 and they they made this beautiful map just by looking at topographic maps it was nothing else it was just looking reading topography and this is i can tell you this is this is you know the uh Maulana and Topana, they call it grandfathers of the the time yes sorry your, your time is only 10 minutes remaining okay lovely yeah yes, thanks a lot uh, okay, great. So this was created, as I said, they're called the grandfathers of, uh, you know, the tectonics of Southeast Asia, I mean, I mean the entire uh, South and Southeast Asia. The reason for that is simple because they can understand tectonic topography, how to read maps. And this map is a classic map created in 1977, still relevant. And, and as I said, that this, this is the power of, uh, you know, the tectonic topography. So here is another beautiful uh, map. Uh, it's a LIDAR imagery. Uh, and as I said, you're lucky. So you can see uh, it just probably comes from the San Andreas Fault System. And look at the beautiful fault and look at the, how this Wallace Creek is being offset dextral. It's a dextral strike system. The red, you know, the, that those variations that you see here are basically indicating that that uh, portion is relatively topographically up and this is down. And But you can see the dextral strike slip fault. Beautiful. This was impossible in, in the past, but now we have, we have a really uh, important uh, we call this, uh, you know, we have the data where you can use and you can become great uh, scientists by, by uh, interpreting that. So this is some of the work that we did. For example, um, this is a map that comes from my work. So here's a huge uh, fault. Uh, you know, you may have heard about the main Himalayan fault and that fault, as I already told you why that fault is there. This is a, this is a, you know, what we call these um, mega thrust. It's a big plate boundary fault system. And most of the earthquakes that you have heard about Nepal, uh, Kashmir earthquake, Nepal earthquake, they are created uh, on that. This, this fault system is the main source of that thing. So you need to understand how it is, why is it there? And, and then, as I said, then what we can, what we can do. So this is a Kashmir. Again, uh, I come from the Kashmir area and, and, and that's a special thing that uh, uh, it's not like because of that, I, I love it more, but look at this. Do you see any, any, any topographic feature as beautiful as Kashmir Basin? You don't have it. It is surrounded with the mountains. Now we have snow there, and then we have this this valley. So the the beauty of Kashmir is nothing but tectonic, it's geological, is 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 tectonic origin. So therefore, now you can understand why is this basin in the middle of the mountains. You may you will answer that. I mean, I have you know uh, understood it, but there are many questions unanswered. So you are the people who can understand how the basins form in the middle of the topography and what is the roll up. Uh, tectonics in, in, in all that uh, system. So here again, we have interpreted, this is like the Asatium data, freely available. You can use the same thing and you can create the maps that I've shown you here, where we, we create, for example, there's, an, uh, there's a fault, uh, this, we call it Jahalim uh, fault. Uh, and this is a left lateral strike slip system down here. And then we have the reverse fault. And this was the fault where we had a huge earthquake in 2005. So this is, you know, showing the 3D of that, and you can also know what you call the fault plane solution. Uh, uh, in other words, you can map it and then see um, how we can use it. So all of this information is freely available using satellite imagery. As, what I'm saying is that 